This is Terrence Roach, a 25-year-old psychopath who is now being interrogated for murder and abuse of corpse. His victim? An innocent teen in a wheelchair. Beckerly, a 19-year-old with severe disabilities who had to use a wheelchair, was first reported missing on July 17, 2016. A 911 call from Aaliyah's house captured the raw emotion the Beckerly family had the moment they saw her wheelchair beside her bed and nothing but sheets where she once laid. 911, what's your emergency? They came in my house and took my disabled daughter. She okay. needed a wheelchair. She got a The search for Aaliyah started. For eight months, many wondered where Aaliyah was. On March 27, 2017, Evansville police said a decomposed body was discovered inside a vacant home on South Bedford Avenue. It was identified as Aaliyah Beckerly. Then, two days after the body was identified, Terrence Roach was arrested in connection with the case. The house on South Bedford Avenue where the remains were discovered was right next door to the house where Terrence Roach stayed. He was then quickly taken for an intense interrogation by the police. Let's see how the Evansville detectives will corner him into a confession. I gotta say, I was a little confused the other day um, on uh, the window. Uh, I'll make sure I know what window you're talking about, okay? Because obviously crime scene did a lot of work on it. This is the front of the house. Um, of course, the, this is the alley pictures. Um, is this the area that you parked in, in the back? Now, the gate's open. Do you remember is this the area that you parked in the back here now? Or this is the front of the house. Do you think you parked out front or do you think you parked in the back? This is just looking down, down the alley in one direction. Here's a better shot of this is the fence and it's kind of grew up in the back, I know. Kind of hard to see it all at one time here. But, uh, these are all shots of the back here. See, there's a better shot of it right there. Back of the alley. Obviously, I know it's nighttime when you were parked there, so it looks different, but. Is that the alley you remember parking in? This would be the, this would be the, like right here is her house. Right here is Aaliyah's house, you know. This is the, and then this would be looking the other direction. Um, this would be like, uh, this would be the one way on this. Yeah, way. that's, and that's good, they're going south. You know, look familiar to you? Well, there's the front of the house. You think he parked in the front of the house? No. Okay, moving down. Probably just look different to you? Okay. Well, here is the back of the house. When Roach eventually responds to the officer, you must strain to hear him, since it almost seems as though he has entirely given up. Roach appears nearly mute. No, I'm saying, but you remember that's her house. Okay, that's all I'm asking. You. Now this is uh, this is the this is the back windows. Um, I think one time you said when I talked to you it was the back window, but then you said it was Aaliyah's bedroom window. So this is a window that was found partially open in the back, but then we have some pictures of, let me move forward here. Now this is looking down like right here. If this is, they're sticking together here on me. If this is the side, of, this is like looking down the side of the house. This is like if I'm standing right here with my camera, looking down the side of the house right here. This is the, the angle. I'm, this is the view I'm looking at. Now you see, there's a window right there that goes into her bedroom. Is that by chance the window you went in? I didn't go in. You didn't go in. It. Okay, what do you mean you didn't go in? You just reached through the window. Well, you, I mean, this is pretty high. You would have had to crawl through at some point. Well, look, 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 okay, then, we'll, then while we're on that, this is the window. So that window is right there. And that's her bed. Now, obviously, you'd have to reach pretty far. Tell me again how you did that, because this is what we need to clarify, okay? 
tell me for sure how you how you took her off that bed without completely getting into that window. Pretty sure I just reached in and grabbed her. Let me ask you a question. Close right here in the toy box right there. Well, there, there's a toy box right there. Yeah, you're right. So how did, did the toy box help you in some fashion? Explain that to me. Not physically help you, the toy box can't move. I mean, did that toy box play a factor in this? Tell me, tell me about that, because that's important. It helped me slide her over so I could pull out the window. Okay. So, okay. So, I'm going to get a couple better shots here of that bedroom. Hang on one second. Let me get a better shot. Okay. So, this shot right here, for example. Or maybe that shot there. That's a little better. So that's moving over. That's moving over. Farther over. So see how that lid is kind of cockeyed? How it's kind of tilted? Is that what you, you think that was done by you pulling her through that window on top of this? Is that what you're saying? I don't know if it was like that afterwards. Well, this is what this was the morning. Uh, this was the morning that her mother realized that she's gone. This is this is our crime scene technician taking pictures the morning after she was missing. So this was probably within a few hours of you taking her from the home. Okay. So see how these curtains, these blinds are messed up. Did you just push the blinds open with one hand? And you're saying you reached across the bed and drug her? Is that what you did? Show me, show me exactly, and then you, but you, you showed me yesterday about how you lifted it. Um, why don't you stand up for me and tell me again how you, show me how you drug her across and then what you did from there. Like this is the bed right here. That's the toy box you're sitting on. Okay, tell me, show me how you, how you, how you did what you did. Okay. So you pulled her through the window? Okay. Do you remember this? Do you remember that growth, that high? That's probably the start of a tree or some type of growth. I don't know what that is, but did you remember going past that or anything? You got a row of this fence by yourself? Did you remember anything breaking on this fence? I think that was already broke. You didn't break that off? It looks fresh to me, like, it looked like maybe you cracked it off or something? I think it was already broken, not for sure. But you got her over this fence. Is that what you're saying? All right, Terry, I want to ask you a question, okay? The story is somewhat believable, okay? It is. And if that's the truth, I appreciate it. But I want to make sure, I know Detective Hands here, we're worried about something, okay? We're really worried about something. Um, and we don't want this to come to light later. You realize that your younger daughter, or you going to say? Her younger sister, Carly, she's 13, going to be far, just turned 14. She's a Jew now, okay? So she's protected by law, all right? I want to make sure, did, did Carly help you remove Aaliyah from the house? No. And you promised me that. Now you, I told you the other day, Terrence, I know you apologized to Lyon for me the first time, you know, before we got to the whole truth. I mean, you told me a majority of the truth, but you didn't tell me the whole truth. Uh, you didn't tell me the part about her be actually being alive when she left the house, okay? And then you apologize for that, and I commend you for that. Terrence, I, it's just tough on everybody. It really is. This is, this is, you know, but I commend you for being honest with me, and you told me everything about the sex with Aaliyah when she was dead upstairs, and you told me about all that stuff. The duct, and you, the duct tape, you were honest about that. So we, so we commend you for all of that. So now there's no reason for you not to tell the truth on any on even if Roach hasn't been totally obvious so far, the ease with which the story transpired is horrifying. It's unsettling to consider that someone might simply reach through a window and kidnap someone without even having to enter the house. 
no, another, another friend. There's nobody else with you. Mm -hmm. If you were asked to place your hand on the Bible, on the stand, next to that judge, like you said today, that's an oath to tell the truth and all but the truth. And they ask you the same question. You, you would say the same answer. There's nobody helped you remove or leave from the residence. Why would I have to testify? I'm using this as an example. No, you may not have to testify. That's not what I'm saying. You forget, I'm saying that if you were asked to tell the truth in front of a judge, if you were asked to put your hand on the Bible, which is to send a lie on that Bible, what I'm asking you is, would you still say the same thing that no one helped you remove Aaliyah? Yes. Okay. The detective emphasized the point in the serious room. A judge is asking with a Bible in hand. Imagine that. Would you vouch that you acted alone today, too? As the response repeated, yes, just the same, the tension increased. It to me uh, that you had had sexual relations with Karen on a previous occasion uh, when you were under the influence and things. Uh, is that still the truth? You, you had sex with Karen? Okay. How many times did you actually have sex with Karen? Just one time. Now, obviously, like I told you, about a month before this happened, she had a surgery in Annapolis. So, well, I, I know you don't. You weren't involved. But it's about, about the time period, shortly after the time that your dad was arrested for the shooting incident. Okay. And I think I asked you for to make sure you had sex with Kara before the incident when your dad was arrested for the shooting or after? Before. Before. Okay. All right. And you just had sex for one time and it was involving drugs and... Alcohol. Alcohol. Okay. So there's no reason you're telling, me, telling us the whole truth on everything else. You'd be honest about that. You promise. You... Okay. All right. Well, it's already over. I'm not going to be able to get out of jail anymore. Well, and you're, I mean, right now the one thing you can do is be honest, right? Um, and I asked you, and you don't know of any other times that Carol let other guys have sex with Aaliyah? So you think that part's probably not true, or as far as you know? Or, as far as I know. As far as you know. But you definitely didn't have sex with prior uh, Leah, uh, prior with Aaliyah prior to taking her that night. Okay. Um, I'm gonna ask you one more time because you are being honest. You're not protecting me, care for anything, right? You promised that. Yes. You were telling the truth now. That's all come out. So we're not missing anything, right? No. You you acted alone. And just just had the idea to take, take her and take her down to Bedford Street. So I guess when you put her up, when you put her up there, um, you never intentionally meant for her to die. I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. You pretty certain? Tell me again how that duct tape was wrapped. Okay. Do you think you could have covered her nose up at all? You sure about that? Are you positive? Positive. Just, just her mouth was covered up around her head. But with her being handicapped, she probably didn't breathe very well either anyway. How did you lay her upstairs when you put her down? Uh, I don't remember. Well, when you had, your, when you had sex with, with, with the lady upstairs, was she on her back? You didn't do any other positions with her. Is that right? I mean, hate to be gross, or hate to be blunt, but I have to ask that question. When you had sex with her, you were on top of her and she was on her back. You didn't put her on her knees or anything and do anything else with her? Okay. okay. <clears throat> hey, go ahead and eat, man. I'm sorry. Look, going back to the window, you feel pretty certain that this window right by her bed, the, the one with the disturbed... Um, Lines and that cup, that lid there on the toy box. That's where you got her from, right there. Okay. <clears throat> Jeff, uh, Terrence, <clears throat> what I'd like to, I've been working with the Detective Melt on this since the get go on this. And just, I just happened to be out of town when this all went down. I came in early this morning and watched your 
thinking the other day and I read some of the stuff about everything. And I just kind of like to go over a, a timeline because um, I've been pretty to some information that <clears throat> after Kara found out that you were in custody and she was talking to your dad, have you known Kara longer than your dad? I'm not sure who knew each other longer. Okay. How did you originally meet Kara? Um, she babysit me, I guess, one day of Jamie. She babysit you? Yeah. And who else? Jamie. Jamie. Wilder. Okay. Is that one of Kara's high school friends or something? I'm not sure if they went to high school. Okay. And then how old do you think you would have been when that, when that went on? Um, I don't know. I know it's when she lived in Bradford Point. Okay. All right. That helps. That helps. Uh, and so she would come over, you would go over there and she would watch you after school or? It wasn't like always. It was like a couple times. A couple times. Okay. With Jamie. And then you start getting older and after Kara moves in Bradford Point, where, do you know where she moved to then? Is that when she bought the house in Iowa, do you know? Or? Um, that's when my sister and her and my dad were together. Okay. So when... When was the last time you you saw Kara and talked to her? Mm. Wherever her dad was, I went over there. My dad got locked up for shooting at the house. Okay, so after that you went over there? Okay. Um, that was on the 23rd of May of 2016 is when that, is when that happened. We'll kind of do a little timeline here for you. It appears that the abuse was continuous in this case, as it has been in so many others where a victim is raped by a family member or close friend. This happens when a predator finds an easy target like Aaliyah. Pretty much my day involved me smoking a lot of K2. Can you, can you tell me one more time? Pretty much my day involved me smoking a lot of K2. Okay. And so you smoke K2 the entire day? And, okay, go ahead. And I just pop in my head go and do what I did. Where were you at smoking a K2? Sam, so I think, but... The one on Blackford? Yeah. Okay. I think I was sitting on my truck, though. And that's that little red Dodge you had on her? Big whip. And it just popped in my head and I just did it. it took her. Okay. So... With it being that amount of time frame that you've been in there, you know, it'd been a little while since you've been in there. How did you, did you, had you, how did you pick that window? How did you, I mean, take it, take a deep, deep breath here and just the best of your recollection, let me know how that this night went. Hard to now and, um, <clears throat> Do you remember what clothes you had on? No, I don't remember. Okay. Nighttime? Okay. I know it was dark. I'm not sure what time though. Okay. And we park in the alley, and then what do we do? Let's go step by step through this. I can't remember if I went through the gate or I jumped the fence. Okay. But I went to Leah's window. It was unlocked. Okay. We're walking up. Uh, we're walking up, we get out of the truck. Um, okay, so this would be the alley. Do you remember if you came down and turned in this way? You, I, I think in your other statement you said you backed into the alley? No, I'm oh. not talking about a long time. Um, uh, Bedford. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, you back, that's fine. You back in the alley over on Bedford. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That that's one thing that we just wanted to clear up. So here we go. So you think you either you can't remember if you went through the gate or you jumped the fence. Did you look in any of the other windows to see if they were? Could you look in any other windows to see if make sure they were asleep? Do you remember the TV being on? Mm -hmm. Just take a deep breath and just the, the best you can remember how this how this went. Something was on. I don't know if it was T or like a light or something. Okay. And you know how the layout of the house is here. Mm -hmm.
Could you, could you? Oh, yeah. And the one with the couch. I don't have any. Of okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have any use. The best I can do to land is this one right here. You've got the room where Aaliyah's at in there. And then you have the room over here. Tell me what you remember seeing over on the couch over there. Can you remember where, 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 for you. where do you remember where Carly was sleeping? Or was what was who was in who else was in this? This is Aaliyah's bed right here. This is the living room. Who's out in the living room? And that's kind of a little picture that's kind of facing at a, at a looking down and down. You know the, the kind of the funky L-shaped couch? Mm -hmm. Kara was right there. Carla was lying like that. Okay, so Kara's here. And Carly's here. Okay, and what are they doing? Carly's asleep. It looked like Kara was just laying there, sitting up. I don't know. She was waking up. Okay. What? And what do you mean? Just how? You said Carly's sleeping and she's sitting up. How? How do you or what? What do you remember of that? Did she make any contact with you or anything? Okay. And where's Roscoe at? I didn't see him in there. Okay. You remember going over the fence? Is that is that true? You do remember going over the fence? Okay. Is this the window you went to? Do you think, or was it the window on the other side? That one? Okay. That's the window that's right by her bed. That's the one you think you went through? Okay. You remember sliding up the screen? It looks like in that picture that there, it's a little bit of a gap, like it's been pushed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So. Is it, uh, Terrence, is it, I don't know how to word this, it just be one, are you, are you pretty quiet? I mean, you're, I guess it sounds like you're good at going through a window and getting into a house without somebody hearing you, the way it sounds. Is that pretty accurate, you think? I mean, how much you weigh, you know, 100? 130. 130 pounds, so you're small, you're skinny. So do you, you think that you got through that window and drug Aaliyah out of that window across that toy box and, Kara never heard you. No, I'm not sure, but no, I just sleep reached in. I found her my whole body never went in. Okay, but I mean that Kara never got up and said, Hey, you, or Terrence, or what are you doing, or nothing. Hmm. She never heard you, awoke, or whatever she was doing asleep, or. And she never said nothing. Okay. Can we talk about something else while we're, and Jeff, you think about anything else we'll talk about here in a second, but this, there was a report uh, on file uh, this Maya, Maya, Maya Dysher, how you pronounce it? Dysher, 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 that's, that's Glenn Eastwood's new girlfriend, right? I guess. I know it's his son's baby mom. Okay. Okay. Girlfriend, I'm, they're not married, right? And there's an incident where you, she caught you in her house. Right? And there's no reason not being honest now, right? And you were able to get into this woman's house about uh, 4.30 so in the morning. I don't think it was not 4.30. Well, she, I, you know what? She said there were two incidents. She said she yelled at you. I think it was three. Well, in the morning? Okay. Three, three. I don't remember the exact time. I don't have my glasses. Hang on a minute. I think she reported about 4.30. Okay. okay. So it was a middle night. So you were able to get into this woman's home without her hearing you. And she said that she awoke and you didn't know she was on the couch. You were looking in her bedroom and uh, she saw you crouching down in her hallway looking in her bedroom. Not cross down. But you were in her in her in her hallway. You had some type of something in your hand, a wooden club or something? No, I was carrying a stick. A stick. How'd you get in her house well, without her hearing you? Her bathroom window was open. Bathroom window was open. So so 
And I knocked on the door prior to that and I asked if I could come in and warm them up because I was walking um, um, from First Avenue and somebody gave me a ride over there and that's as far as they was going. And she told me to knock on next door to see if uh, his name Joy let me stay over there. There is a pattern of action here that creates a rather gloomy picture. The officer brought up a previous home invasion case involving Roach. These are times when he got caught. But of course, there might be other times when he didn't get caught. Well, what was your intention looking in her bedroom, having a stick, and climbing in her window? Because I was drunk and the police came. The police, well, the police were outside or something? Yeah, like they shined their lights on me. Like After I got in and knocked on Joy's door, I was going to walk back up, but I was stuck when I seen the flashing Well, she said, she said you knocked and then she chased you away. And then she you came. Chase me. She well, she told, told me. you to leave. Told you to leave. She told me to knock and ask Joey if, uh, if I could stay over there for a little bit. She said, if not, to come back over. But then she wakes up an hour or so later and you're in her house, in her hallway by her bedroom. And again, Terrence, you know, now this is all irrelevant. It really is. I'm just trying to understand your mind thought because we had the incident, you're younger, you had sex with the dog. You know, now now you've got Lee up, upstairs in the vacant house on Bedford. You, you've had sex with her and she's a handicapped girl. Um, do you have a sexual drive that you can't control? I mean, you know, now you're in another woman's home here in January, in her hallway by her bedroom, with a stick in your hand. You know, what was your? I mean, you're obviously under the influence, so it sounds like, it sounds like your sexual desire increases when you're under the influence. Were you going to have sex with this girl too? Mm -hmm. Okay. But the truth of it is, that's all not true. You acted alone. You would swear on your mother, on your father, and on the Bible that you acted alone in this crime and you took her by yourself. Yes. Social media can be an excellent tool for gathering evidence, but it is crucial to distinguish fact from online rumors and gossip, which spread like wildfire. This is especially true before suspect statements, which could be tainted. So, if we run across another case like this, we can, you know, you'll be, you would be helping us out. If there's anything in here that we haven't asked you, or is there any other details you remember anything about any of this case from the time it popped into your head? Had you had thoughts prior about having sex with Aaliyah prior to that night of smoking K2? Any of the other nights you got high? Did you ever have any feelings or anything like that when you get high to have sex? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but not like that, because it normally makes me pass out. Okay. Why do you think this time was different? I don't know. And do you know why we picked Aaliyah? I don't know. Well, I mean, why not Michaela? So worse, you know. I'm, <clears throat> you know, obviously, I'm, I've never smoked K two, so I can't tell you. I can, I know what it feels or anything. So you're sitting in your truck smoking. Is that what you said? And then, just how do you know how how does it pop into your head? I mean, what what was your was your thought process to go over there and just to take her to have sex with her? What was the process of what was the idea of just taking her? Try to walk me through this. Put, put me in your head and let me... In terms, it's, it's okay to be honest. It really yeah. is because you've been honest about a bunch of other stuff. Just, just, you know, be honest in this part too, even though you may think it's embarrassing. Okay? I was going to take her for like a few days just to get back out because I thought she set my dad up. You wanted to get back at Kara? Because she set your dad up? I thought she did. Okay. On the, sh on the shooting part? What, what, is your re what is your understanding of the, sh of the shots fired? Um, from, I don't know when I 
Like he was saying, uh, he was hearing carrying some guy talking uh, that there's great killing. Are we talking about Marty? I don't know. Are we talking? I just know when he hurt his leg for jumping out the window. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when your dad was out prior to the shooting happening, how often did you talk and see your dad? Um, whenever I was able to stay up late enough after I got off the miracle. And would you go by and see him after work? Uh, he would be riding around with my mom. Riding around with your mom? And you would go, she would drop you off over there? Or? No, they just be riding around a couple times I drove him. Okay. Did you, I know your dad, I mean, it's, I'm, I've had conversations with your dad. I mean, he's, I've got to know your dad during this, this whole incident. Um, and so Brent went up and talked to your dad the day this, one ha this happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, did your dad talk to you about Kara's boyfriend that he had moved in, or that she had moved in, or any of that other stuff? Did you know about all the drama that was going on there with her ex-boyfriend, the white guy, Marty? I didn't know that there was a man. Did you know there was drama or shit happening? No. Okay. Well, so. I knew this from what my dad was talking about, that uh, they were trying to kill him. And is that where you had the idea that he, that she set him up? Did you, did your dad ever tell you that he was thinking that they were scheming to kill him? Or? That's what he was saying, they were going to shoot him. Okay. And when did you have your conversation, how did you, when did you have this conversation, how did you, who did you have this conversation with to, um, to, to get this into your head? Okay. I think it was something my mom was telling me. That I seen that he jumped out the window from what they were saying, and he was actually hurt on his leg. Okay. Um, so we're smoking, and then what? What's the plan, man? What? What's the thought process? It just popped in my head to take her. Okay. From the outside of the house, do you know which window was Elias? Okay. From being in there. How many times do you think you've been in that house? I don't know. Okay. More than 10? Okay. Um, what about, um, have you ever smoked meth with your dad and Kara, all the, the three of you together? Okay. Did you ever buy meth from your dad? Did he ever give you any? Okay. Uh, you've been in the house the time before that dog knows you. I don't trust you. Did your mother tell you to go get Aaliyah? No. I mean, was that part of the plan to, because your dad, you felt like Kara was setting him up? Was your mom part of that? No. Your mom didn't tell you at all to go get Aaliyah? No. Your dad didn't tell you over the phone in the jail? I mean, we, we can check that. No. We can check those conversations. Your dad didn't tell you, hey, son, Kara set me up. Go get Aaliyah. No. None of that happened. It's all your idea. So we're smoking and then just, okay, so we're going to go get her. So, I mean, you got to put us in our shoes here. You have, you have two people that are asleep on the couch, two people that know you, and we're going to remove a body from the house. That takes a certain amount of, not skill, but the ability to do that and to go through the, the window. Um, that's where I want to, did you, did you pull yourself up in the window and reach out and grab her? How did you, uh, this is where I really want you to just take a big deep breath, try to clear all your thoughts. I know you've got probably a million thoughts going on in your head, Terrence, and I understand that. But this is just where we're trying to figure out How it happened because a it helped it it helped clears a lot of this stuff up and b it's just a, a, a huge learning experience for us and it's, it's closure for the family because they're feeling guilty for what happened is there something that they could have did that would have stopped this um, so this is where you just if you can just take a deep breath and just relax and you, when you're standing there at the window walk me through how this happens Had over the phone, the jail that you had her up there. No. 
And you never told Glenn next door, your stepdad, Glenn Neesquill, that you had her over there? No, I didn't tell nobody. You didn't tell anybody at all? No. Is, is Carrie... This is my first time talking about it. Is, is Kara, is her, any of her phone numbers in your memory on your phone? Do you have any of her phone that's, numbers? That's a good point. I'm sorry to cut you off, but you said to me Friday that you, you had two phones. There was a cheap one, like, like a flip phone that was kind of cracked. Or, that was my dad's old phone. Yeah. Where got locked up. Okay. And then you had the yellow and black phone that you said was the Wi-Fi only phone. Okay. The one that you said was your dad's phone. You're talking about DeMarco Roach, right? Your real dad. Yeah. And he gave you that phone? Or my mom did. Your mom meaning Dawn. Yeah. It. Did you get that phone from him prior to him getting arrested on June 16th or after that? I know it's my mom just let me start using it and he was locked up. Do you, do you know how she got it? I imagine he gave it to her. Okay. To ensure they gather all available evidence, the authorities must be meticulous in determining how many phones a person has and whether there were any changes during the timeline of the crime. People usually change cell phones with varying frequencies and service providers. Do you sometimes feel that like you can't fulfill your sexual needs or or just haven't found the right woman or what? I mean, just, I mean, everybody's got their own thing. You know, I mean, that's what makes the world go around. That's why we have shops on Greenwood Road to sell sex toys and all the other stuff. I mean, and there, there's porn, there's all, I mean, everything. I mean, so what, how do you describe your sexual life? I mean, what do you want me to say about it? Is it frustrating? I guess it's okay. You're always trying to chase a, a better high or a better... What, what's getting high after the sex? Well, I mean, like a, a better orgasm or a better, I mean, if you... You just got to look at it from our perspective. The incident with the, the dog and then the incident with Aaliyah and stuff. Is there is there anything you're missing or leaving out that we need to know about or anything that, any other incidents that we need to know about? Just be honest, Terrence. You've been honest so far. I'm proud of you. Roach isn't really able to explain his sexual desires very well. And he also doesn't seem to regard them as abnormal. So both detectives find it really difficult to understand the situation. What was your what was your plan if she hadn't passed away? I was going to worry long enough, and I was going to drop her back off at the house, and like in the night, or when would you when would you do that? At night, I was going to kick open the door and just leave. A way to just try to scare the mom. So you never had intentions of starting like in turning a lead into like a sex slave or something. The sex was an afterthought to this whole idea. It was a plan just to give Kara a little payback for the, the debt deal with her previous month when your dad and shooting deal. Did, you, did your dad and your mom still, and I mean, this is totally normal nowadays, or any time. Did your mom, your mom and dad, how, what is their relationship? Is it cool? Do they get along? My dad? Yes. Your He's dad like Mark Dawn, right? He's my Dawn. Dawn. And Dawn and, and, and your dad and Marco, not Kara and Marco. But your real mom, Dawn, and mm, they're still friends. Do you think? I mean, I know this. You probably don't want to talk about this since you're your parents. But do you think they still messed around behind Kara's back? Um, okay. At the jail, there's other inmates that are violent and angry and stuff because it's got so much attention. So uh, I, the higher ups decided to, to keep him in an isolation cell for a while, so he's not in danger from anybody else. So I just didn't want you to think that they were trying to punish him or something by keeping him isolated, but that's for his own protection for right now, okay? Okay, all right. Just to finish up with her and... Mm -hmm. uh, where did I leave off that? But, um, I got court. Oh, yeah, this I go to court Wednesday at 10, the 5th at 10. Dean got to court Tuesday. Although his mother wasn't exaggerating when she warned that other convicts would try to kill him, Roach and his mother both appear disappointed that he has been put on suicide watch. However, it is the safest location for him. When Roach was tried in May of 2018 on three counts of murder, burglary, and kidnapping, the jury ruled him not guilty. Terrence Roach, however, was given a 17-year prison term on June 27, 2018, after the jury found him guilty on the charges of criminal confinement and mistreatment of a corpse. Thanks for joining us for these chilling true crime stories. 
If you're intrigued, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more gripping content. Stay tuned and hit that notification bell to stay updated.